All right, boys, how to create a good offense in Madden. And this is kind of an idea, or these are concepts and ideas that I've used for Madden after Madden. If you guys don't know who I am, uh, I've played competitive Madden for years, had some decent success. Uh, I was behind PA boot over Madden 22. I was one of the first on gun tight in Madden 23, a slot in Madden 20. Um, and I, I've gotten the opportunity to... Uh, lab a lot of things myself, see what works in the pros and see what doesn't work. And I've also gotten to learn from some of the best man players in the world and how they approach the game and building different offenses like that. Uh, Trips Titan has been one of the best offenses forever now, if it feels like. And uh, I, I was lucky enough to learn how to run Trips Titan and stuff like that from some of the best man players in the world, like J-Wall, Fancy, uh, D-Croft, see how they kind of go about you know, putting together an offense. And so I think I've gotten a lot of really cool takeaways and, and, and I use these every single year. The first very important thing is really understanding what the defensive meta is. Uh, you, look, you can have the best play in the world, but if it struggles against a send five uh, slot corner blitz like DB fire this year, it doesn't matter how good it is it doesn't work against the meta. That is the most popular defense you'll see. It just doesn't work. So in 60% of your games, you, the, you, the, your formation just doesn't work, okay? You might have the best zone-beating plays in the game, but if it's a man coverage meta, who cares? Same vice versa, right? You got to understand what the meta is, and you got to understand it, whether or not what you're doing is going to be able to counteract that. Beating the meta is the number one thing you could start, do, or learning how to beat the meta is the number one thing you could do to start winning more games immediately. I, I genuinely mean that, and it, it's true. It's true. If you can learn how to beat the meta, um, that's really like all of what I do on Civil GG. Everything I teach over there is literally based on beating the meta. Now, it works against non-meta stuff too, but it, the, the foundation of it is how do we dominate the meta? Because that's how my my uh, initial thought process is in competitive Madden, is how do I beat what's become, what everybody else is running, the most popular thing, right? So that's first and foremost. If your thing struggles against the, the, the meta, you, it, you just won't you won't be able to have success, okay? And we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this, into that idea with, the very first thing I always love to try to find in a new formation is what I call a power play. Okay, now this ideally is going to be a play that's fairly simple to set up for usually about three hot routes or less, ideal, maybe four, but some that doesn't take too long to set up. Um, and then it's going to work against a majority of coverages and especially against the meta. Okay, this is a play where I don't care if you're in man, I don't care if you're in zone, cover two, cover three, cover four, cover six, whatever you're in, I don't care. I know my reads and I'm gonna snap this play. I'm gonna be able to make my reads and identify who the open wide receiver is and throw it. You know, you learn the timings, you learn the different catching, you learn the different pass lead angles, all of that stuff. You learn in this play and it works against everything, okay? Uh, essentially everything, right? Now, some good examples of this would be PA counter go from uh, this year where you have the uh, the crosser, the flat from the middle wide receiver, the in route from the outside wide receiver, and the streak from the tight end. Uh, PA boot over from last year is a great example of that where it beat everything. Um, in Madden 20, a really good example of this would be how I ran a slot, which was the idiot beater for some of you OGs. You guys remember the idiot beater. Madden 21 would be double posts from Gun Bunch. Um, Another good one in Madden 23 would just be post slant combinations. Uh, even out of, let's say, trips tight end, right? Or, or bunch tight end, where you have a tight end on a post, wide receiver on a slant, and you have a flat and then maybe like a deep post or a streak or something like that. That's going to be one of those kind of power plays that's fairly easy to set up, and you can run it and you can make the reads against the majority of coverages, okay? You have to have that power play. If, and the reason for that is because you need a play that, one, you can rely on against different uh, against maybe a weird set a weird defense and two that you rely on in tough situations right you, you need a play that you can rely on when you're on a third and two when you're on a fourth and four and you can pick up the, the, those yards because you're so used to it and you know hey no matter how crazy they get with their adjustments no matter what they they try doing you're gonna be able to get it you're gonna be able to do okay you're gonna be able to move the ball okay like you're gonna be able to make the read you could trust yourself getting comfortable at play the one of the ways i go about learning some of these plays in, in my ebooks 
and this especially goes for the power play, but it goes for a lot of plays that I call a lot, is I go into online head-to-head games, games I don't care about winning. If I lose, who cares? And I only call that one play. No matter what they're in, I only call that one play for an entire game. And it makes you have to get used to making the read, making the read, making the read on that play, right? That's a huge, huge, huge deal. Now, this power play is also combined with the next thing we're going to say, and that, that is just having pass protection, okay? You, you have to. You have to. And, and uh, by the way, for this video, in terms of uh, well, we're mostly talking about like a more of a pass-heavy offense, by the way, um, just because the run game hasn't been sustainable to be a to be an entire offense for a while now. But, yeah, we're talking about pass-heavy. pass, pass heavy. So you got to have pass protection. It doesn't matter how good your routes are. If you get screamed at by whatever meta blitz it is, if you can't beat the meta blitz, it doesn't matter. You will look like you're bagged. Someone will scream in your face, you suck. You will get told that you are the worst man player on earth because you can't pick up a simple five-man blitz. And while... You, you, and, and the thing is, when you're on offense and you're getting bagged by a five-man blitz, all you can say is, I have so-and-so open. X is a touchdown if I just get time. I have B wide open. He's just insta-sacking me. And you could say that all you want, but the fact of the matter is you're still getting sacked and you're still going to lose that game. So you've got to have protection for it. A good way to go about finding protection is to go into a game against yourself, two controllers, or go into a game against a friend and have them run the meta blitz against you and see, can you pick it up? This year... You had to have play action. If you could run play action and then immediately cancel that play action and have the halfback block, you were going to pick up the majority of, uh, of meta blitzes this year. It was just a fact of the matter. But that's a big checklist thing is having pass protection. No pass protection equals you, who cares, right? That's why five wide will always struggle to be an overwhelming meta. Sometimes it will be cool bubble gum like we saw with empty tray stack this year. But you can't block any blitzes from five wide. And almost nobody is good enough on this earth, including myself, including the best man players in the world, really, are good enough to consistently pass over top of Blitz without picking it up ever, right? If they're getting pressure on you with five and you try to just, you know, oh, I'm, I'm just going to quick pass it, quick pass it. You can't do it. You might be able to go one game in a tournament doing it, two games in a tournament doing it, three games in a tournament doing it. But that fourth, fifth game, you're going to have a bad game. You're going to be a little slow on your reads and you need to be able to pass protect. You, you have to. You have to be able to pass protect eventually, okay? You just... You really, 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 really have to. Now, the next thing I do want to mention really fast is having a uh, essentially a little bit of a bailout. Um, and this essentially this is something I really learned after my first tournament run in Madden 20, where I lost in the final 16 because I had a really bad, I had a really, really bad offensive game. Um, uh, Nick Hacko was my opponent. He played good defense, but I really felt like I was missing a lot of reads, and I just couldn't snap into it, right? I just was, I was just having an off day. It's like if you're shooting, if you're a great three-point shooter, you're just missing, right? Sometimes that happens. And what I needed at that time was something to make the game easy for myself, something to make moving the ball easy. Now, sometimes that's a really good run play. Sometimes that's a pass play that you may, that's kind of like the power play, but it, it, it falls kind of into the power play category, but it's a little bit more maybe bubble gum. It's a little bit more, you know, maybe it's a one play bomb. Maybe it's a rollout corner um, that can be defended, but, you know, it's kind of like a, 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 a secondary play that you have. Um, something that kind of makes the game easy for yourself that you're able to really rely on, right? This goes very closely with the power play. It really, really does. And again, a good example of that would be something like PA boot over, right? But another example of it would be something like the play triple out from last year uh, in Madden 22, where triple out would be a one play touchdown against a majority of coverages. Um, this was a play that I used as a bailout for myself a lot on a lot of fourth downs where I was, you know, they would bag my power play and I had a secondary play that was, that, that was a bailout that made things easy on myself, right? Now, the next thing you kind of need to do, and you, you've got to really identify this, is after playing, you know, 50 games in, an, in, a, in, a, in a formation, you know, it doesn't have to be 50, it could be 10, 15, 20, kind of identify in your head or on pen and paper I've done this, identify and, and, and tell yourself, ask yourself, how am I getting stopped? It, what is happening? Why am I getting stopped? And once you figure that out, right, write it down, write, write down all, of your, well, all the times you've been stopped, what's happening, and then solve it. And what I mean by that is if you're always getting stopped in the red zone, you can just move the ball all the way to the 15. But once you're inside the 15, you can't move anymore. Okay, what does that, what does that mean? You got to lab some red zone, right? 
you can't beat cover two. This dude's always sitting in cover two. Every time you play cover two, you just can't move the ball on it. Means you got a lab red zone do or lab beating cover two, right? Can't beat man every time. Man, I move easy on zone, but once they run man, I can't. You got to sit down and lab man from your formation, okay? It, it, it really is that. It's kind of like, you know, that stepping process. And that, that's the thing that you can only really learn um, once you start playing games, right? Because you, you can have a power play. You can have that, you know, that secondary play, pass pro. But you get into games and realize, man, like, I'm just really struggling against cover three cloud. Have a play. And then you got to lab how to have a play to beat that right simple as that labbing one play touchdowns is really important being able to go to a one play touchdown is is really 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 uh it, it can help you out it's kind of into that bailout kind of category but it's always good to have one play touchdowns against the majority of coverages that you're going to see i also recommend having an all out blitz beater as well something where if they start sending seven or eight on you you got to be able to beat that uh, two point play. It's always nice to have a one two point play that you can go to, or and really just having you know plays for different different parts of the red zone. Really, I think is really really important. Um, I, I think that's a huge deal. There's a ton that goes into building offenses, boys. And if you find yourself struggling on offense or defense to win more games, Silva.gg is my website. I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, I have full schemes over there where I've used in pro tournaments. Right now, we actually, until June 16th, I have a sale going on. Code BETA gets you $40 off an annual subscription, which means that if you're playing right now, Madden 23, you'll get access to everything we've done in Madden 23. And it's a year-long subscription, so you can go all the way till next year. That's going to be code BETA. But you could just also do the monthly as well, and then you just get access for however months that you keep on subscribing for. It's up to you. That's a really good way to – where I do all that work that I'm talking about right here – for you another thing that you can kind of do though is you can subscribe to the website right you can see all the stuff and you still want to be on your own you can just use a lot of the same concepts i use a lot of concepts from you know trips tight end that i see uh comp players use i use it at bunch tight end right and they use why do in bunch tight end and trips tight end and bunch and trips tight end and trips tight end and bunch right you know steal other people's ideas and find ways to make them into your own right i guess stealing is the wrong word but you know what i mean um that's a great 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 strategy uh, but yeah, there's kind of some fundamentals that I think really goes into making a, a decent offense. It's really like baseline stuff right there, boys. Uh, if you want to make a bigger like in-depth video, let me know. I can kind of go a little bit deeper into that. Um, but yeah, that's really like how I think some of the like the initial like foundation building blocks of building an offense. That's what it comes from. Also, I get this question a lot. How many plays should your offense be? I think less than, if you're going above 15, you're going way too many. I think 15 is a lot. Above 15, way too many. I think only a few formations. And uh, yeah.